I have to admit, I went down a rabbit hole a little bit on this one. I recently did an in-depth analysis of all the Ethernet ports on the devices in my home network. And to be quite honest with you, I was shocked by the results at first. The good news is, after some further analysis and looking into the situation, I had a revelation and an understanding that I didn't have before. In this episode from Network From Home, I'm gonna walk you through the experiment that I ran, the initial findings that I had, and then what my analysis really taught me about the devices in my home network and the ethernet ports that they have. This whole thing started when I was doing a speed test comparison between an ethernet internet connection and a Wi-Fi internet connection on my laptop. I'll link to that video up above if you're curious, but essentially I was expecting to find ethernet speeds much faster than Wi-Fi speeds. In reality, however, the ethernet speeds of my laptop were less than 100 megabits per second, whereas the Wi-Fi speed of my laptop was much faster. I decided to look a little bit further into this and what I found, which surprised me, was that my laptop had an ethernet port that was only rated for 100 megabits per second. This was surprising to me because I knew the most common ethernet ports that you'll see today will either be rated for 100 megabits per second or 1000 megabits per second, also known as one gigabit per second. So I was wondering why my laptop had this lesser rated ethernet port. Why wouldn't it have the fastest one? And furthermore, are there any other devices in my home network that also have an ethernet port rated for 100 megabits per second? To my astonishment, I found additional devices in my home network that had ethernet ports rated for 100 megabits per second instead of 1000 megabits per second. I found a 100 megabit per second ethernet port on my printer, on my wireless speakers, and also on my Apple TV. So this begged the question for me, why do these devices have 100 megabit per second ethernet ports? I also wondered what this meant for my devices. Because they only had 100 megabit per second ethernet ports, does this mean that I wasn't getting the maximum performance out of these devices? Does this mean that I needed to upgrade my devices in order to get better performance? Was 100 megabit per second ethernet ports the only type of ethernet port that was around when I bought these devices? All these questions sent me into a whirlwind and I decided to do further research to see if I could figure out what was going on. After some quick internet searching, I quickly found that 1000 megabit per second ethernet ports were released in the late 90s. And all the devices in my home network I have purchased more recently than that. In other words, 1000 megabit per second ethernet ports were all available at the time that I bought these devices. I thought about this some more and that's when I had a revelation. I started thinking about another video that I've published that talks about the minimum download speed needed in order to perform different internet actions. And this is when it hit me. I realized that for these devices, None of them need more than 100 megabits per second in order to get good performance. Let's take an Apple TV for example. What is the most bandwidth intensive action you can perform with an Apple TV? Well, that's streaming ultra high definition video. Referring back to the video that I previously put together, in order to get good performance when streaming ultra high definition video, you need at least 25 megabits per second of download speed. So if you're getting 100 megabits per second through a wired internet connection, that's more than enough bandwidth you would ever need for an Apple TV to perform well. This example is further highlighted by both my printer and wireless speakers. Neither of these devices are going to be performing high bandwidth tasks, so they'll never need more than 100 megabits per second to perform what they need to do. The other device in question, my laptop, fits the same profile as my Apple TV. The most bandwidth intensive thing I'll be doing with my laptop is streaming ultra high definition video. So again, my laptop will never need more than 25 megabits per second in order to accomplish what it needs to. So for all of you out there thinking about the devices in your home network, there's no need to panic here. 
If you have any devices with a 100 megabit per second ethernet port, it's probably because that device will never need more than 100 megabits per second of bandwidth in order to perform its intended functions. As a side note for your information, another thing I noticed during this research is that any devices put out in the last few years, it seems like they all have 1000 megabit per second ethernet ports by default. Even if the device will never need 1000 megabits per second of bandwidth, it just seems like it's the standard now. This is evidenced by the latest versions of Apple TV. Those all have 1000 megabit per second ethernet ports. They'll never need that much bandwidth, but it seems like that's just the standard. Although this is overkill, it's just one less thing you have to worry about. You'll never have to worry about the ethernet port on your devices not being sufficient for the things that you're going to ask the device to accomplish, even if they only support 100 megabits per second of bandwidth. If you have any questions about this material or questions about my experiment, please drop a comment below. If you found this type of video interesting, this self-study, this rabbit hole that I went down, please give the video a like. This will number one, show me that you enjoy this content and it also ensures it will get shared with other people as well. If you're a fan of my videos and the way that I present this material, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I have no shortage of content coming forward here, so there's going to be plenty more that you'll hopefully enjoy as well. As always, thanks for checking out this video from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.